Disclaimer, this is only going to be going over how to use the graph editor in After Effects. In my experience though, most graph editors abide by the same basic principles, so if you get good at using the graph editor in After Effects, you're probably going to be good at using it in softwares like Premiere and Maya. You've learned how to keyframe, but your animations look stiff and adding more keyframes to try to manually ease your animations sounds tedious. Lucky for you, there's a tool to completely circumvent having to do that. Select the keyframes you want to add easing to and press F9. You'll notice that the keyframes go from a diamond shape to an hourglass shape. Now, if you go and play the animation again, you'll notice it looks a lot smoother. And that's because it is. You've just applied an easy ease to your keyframes. You can also do this by right-clicking on your keyframe and going down to the keyframe assistant bar and then selecting easy ease. There's a few other options for easing here, but that's not what this video is going to focus on. This is great, and honestly, for about 80% of the keyframing you'll do, it's probably good enough. But what if it's not enough? What if you want more control over the easing? That's where the graph editor comes in. Once you've selected your keyframes and pressed F9, you can click this neat little box, and it'll replace your timeline with the graph editor. I would recommend navigating down to the bottom of the graph editor, clicking this box, and selecting Edit Speed Graph. I believe by default, the graph is either set to Auto Select Graph Type or Edit Value Graph, so you'll have to check. In my experience, the speed graph is useful for animating most things, but it ultimately comes down to preference. The speed graph is most of what I'm going to be showing you how to use though. How the speed graph works is that the x-axis of the graph shows time, and the y-axis shows the rate at which the animation completes between keyframes. If you don't apply any easing to your keyframes, it looks like this, since the rate at which the animation completes remains the same. Adding an easy ease to the keyframes makes the speed graph look like this. Now, we want more control over our animation. We can click anywhere on the line and it'll pop out one of these handles coming out of each keyframe. If you're familiar with the pen tool in any Adobe software, you know what this is. It's called a Bezier handle, and it's used to control the curvature of a vector. What's a vector? I'll go over that in a future video. By moving the handle around, you can see that it visibly changes the way the entire graph looks. By pulling around these handles, you can pretty easily change the easing of your animation to make it smoother. You can make it go exponentially faster, slower, or both. And overall, make more dynamic motion graphics. You'll notice as you're dragging around the handles, you can see a box appear by your cursor, displaying the speed and the influence. By dragging the speed up or down, you can change what speed the animation starts or ends at. Influence is used to determine where the animation will be at its fastest. Generally, I would recommend trying to keep the influence values of both of your keyframes as close to the same number as possible. Although, by changing one and not the other, you can also achieve interesting effects. You can also switch your graph to the Edit Value Graph, the same way we selected the Speed Graph. The Value Graph's x-axis is time, and the y-axis displays the number associated with whatever value you're animating. If you're editing position, it's necessary to right-click where it says Position and then selecting Separate Dimensions, as that way you can edit the graphs of both the x and y values of your layer. Using this graph allows you to more easily create things like a bouncing effect, and you can also start playing around with having your animations back in and out. I tend to stay more with the speed graph, as that's all I need for my work, but some might prefer the value graph instead. If you want to add more than one value at the same time in the graph editor, then you can either individually select all the keyframes you want to bring into the graph editor, or you can check this small icon on as many properties as you'd like. Keep in mind though, that they stay selected until you deselect them, which can easily lead to a messy workspace and a mess of different graphs. You can also copy these keyframes and paste their values onto other layers if you like the way the animation looks. For example, if I like the animation on this text, I can select the position keyframes, hit Ctrl and C, move over to another text object, select Position, then hit Ctrl and V. Getting efficient at using this tool is probably the single best thing I've learned in After Effects, and makes a huge difference visually when you have a final product. I would recommend against using the graph editor on values like opacity or anything having to do with color, since in my experience it tends to add extra work without a product that's all too noticeably different or better. I personally would mostly use it on things like position, rotation, and scale, although ultimately that's up to you. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's been a year since I uploaded anything, and this isn't what I'm known for making, but this is something I wanted to make, and I plan on making more videos like this in the future. If you're interested in seeing more of this in the future, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. I had a lot of fun making this, and I hope you learned something useful. Let me know in the comments what other things you want to see me explain in After Effects. I might also make some of these videos for things in Premiere as well, depending on how well this video does. I'm going to try to upload more than once this year, and I'm working on a handful of scripts for things to hopefully get out before the end of the year.